After a thrilling opener at Strada Bianca two weeks ago, the Women's World Tour returned again to Italy for the Trofeo Alfredo Binder. In Italian fashion, the sun shone down on the riders at the start in Taino. Ahead of them, 131 kilometres of hilly terrain, wending its way between the famous lakes of Lombardy, the climbs appearing with greater frequency as the race goes on. One of the most established on the calendar, the race stretches back to 1974, the most recent history maker being Lizzie Dynan, who claimed the previous two editions. I feel in good shape. I've had two weeks good training. I missed strength there and uh, obviously Strider was a good start, so I'm optimistic about today. Also a former champion here, Lisa Longo-Borghini, the women's world tour leader. Yeah, it will be a, probably a very hard race uh, with that um, extra climb in the local laps and uh, it will be yeah, just uh, very, very hard and steady from, from the beginning. I don't think it's correct to expect me to win today. Uh, I will just enjoy and try to, to race as hard as I can. It's, uh, I'm very happy to wear the jersey and I just would like to enjoy the race. And looking to make good on her promising early form this season, Italian national champion Elena Cecchini. The tricolor jersey is always extra motivation, especially when we are in Italian soil. Uh, I'm a bit far from home, so it's not right my home soil, but I love this race. Uh, it's a lovely day, we have a strong team, so everything seems perfect right now. It may have had the weather of a blissful Sunday ride, but this is a women's world tour race, and that means aggressive racing from the off. And aggressive racing means even fiercer attacks. The first was spearheaded by Anna Trevisi of Ale Cipollini. By the time she reached Cittilio for the first of six times in the race, she had been joined by two natives of Lombardy, Silvia Valsecchi and Simona Fraporti. The trio only gained 25 seconds on the peloton and were brought back on the run into the first and longest climb of the day. Last year, the peloton disintegrated over the four kilometres of the Conado climb, but it was a different story this time. Even with the high pace, the group stayed as one on the slopes with an average gradient of 7%. As soon as they had surmounted it, BTC City Ljubljana pushed another break. Anna Stricker flew off the front. Leah Lizane joined her to lead the race into Cittilio again and the four finishing laps. Stricker was alone again when she reached the climbs, her advantage zigzagging like the hairpins of the ascent itself. But by 78 kilometres gone, it was all back together and all to play for. Orica Scott's Jessica Allen never passes the chance to make an electrifying solo attack. Last week at Ronda van Drenthe, she forced the race action with one, and she did it again here. The Australian quickly gained more than 35 seconds and naturally a few chasers. Anna Celloni was the first to try her legs, but was swept up by the peloton at the top of a Reno, while Allen's lead increased. Sabrina Staltiens had more luck, attacking as Allen did the lap before. But with 30 kilometers to the finish, it was clear neither could hold off the pack in full force. But Stultians wasn't to be forgotten. Onto the descent and onto another escape. This time dragging one of the race favourites along with her, last year's under-23 champ, Kazia Nuviadoma, who stayed resolutely in her slipstream. Katerine Garfoot's Australian champion's jersey had rarely been absent from the front of the peloton all day. But it was here that she decided to make a go of it herself. She was joined, though, by a dangerous trio. Three-time race winner Mariana Voss, Elena Amulusic, who's made the top five three years in a row, and Shara Gillow, whose blistering late attack almost saw an upset at Strada Bianca. Through Cittilio for the last time before the gantry becomes a finish line. One lap to go, and the rest couldn't afford to let that quartet continue. Dynan, usually accustomed to being out in front across the finish line, led the group up the penultimate climb. Before yet another Orica Scott attack, Annemiek van Floyten sparking a reaction from Nivia Doma and Longo Borghini. They gained ground on the fast ascent, with Corin Rivera tucked tight to keep up behind. Garfoot bridged the gap to the escapees once again, and without a hint of a look, swept straight past. 
Using her time trial expertise, Garfoot hit the final ascent of the race alone. But as often happens with the most threatening breakaways, Bowles Dolman's upped the pace. The distinctive jerseys of Longo Borghini and Nevia Doma shot to the front once more. Over the top of the final climb at Arino, the group collected together. There'd be no more opportunities for the climbers. On the quick run into Chitilio, Van Floyten tried to get away, as did Audrey Cordon. The fiercest on the descent, however, proved to be the Polish champion. Losing her lead position to Gillo only when she hit the flat with two kilometers to go. Hills out of sight, the teams began to weave together what sprint trains they had left. Team Sunweb fell into formation for their sprinter and newest addition to the team, Rivera. Cervelo Bigler pulled alongside. On the last corner before the finishing straight, Team Sunweb took prime position, with Astana's Arlene Sierra on their wheel. The relentless drag up to the finish meant that this was a sprint that had to be timed right. And with more than 150 metres to go, Rivera let fly. She pushed all the way up to the line, but claimed her first Women's World Tour win by almost a bike length in the end. Taking victory from Sierra, who celebrated second place with almost as much enthusiasm. This season's revelation, Cecily Utrup Ludwig, rounded out the podium. I didn't doubt myself and I really had to fight and really push and the team uh, worked really hard to, to get me in the position and be there and be fresh for the final. So, you know, I, I owe it to them so there's a little added pressure there, but uh, yeah, I had full confidence as long as uh, I could just hang on to the leaders. Ellen Van Dyke is uh, totally instrumental in our in our teamwork and our team. You know, her power and her strength is unreal, and I think if she didn't catch back on to the, to the group and I didn't have the same lead out that she gave me, um, I think the final would have been a lot harder for me to win. Bueno, creo que es una carrera bastante fuerte. Nunca había tenido la experiencia de correr aquí y menos en una Copa del Mundo. Eh, le doy muchas gracias a Dios por las fuerzas que me dio porque fue una carrera bastante fuerte y bueno. I got this uh, position because uh, Marie Villeman she did an amazing lead out. You know, the, the, before the last K, before La Flamme Rouge, she took a major, you know, lead and that put me in the position to be able able to uh, go on the podium. So, uh, you know, a special shout out to Marie um, Bielman, who did such an amazing job. Yet another top 10 finish for Elisa Longo Borghini ensured that she retained the UCI Women's World Tour leaders jersey on home turf, while Cecily Utrup Ludwig regains the youth jersey from Amelie Diedrichsen. Outside the podium spots, Bowles Dolman's rider Chantal Bluck led the rest of the finishers home, coming in ahead of Elena Cecchini and Orica Scott's Annemiek van Floyten. Cecchini's fifth place sees her jump up to second in the UCI Women's World Tour leaders' rankings, 15 points ahead of van Floyten. And in the youth standings, Ludwig's first ever Women's World Tour podium gives her a six-point lead over fellow Dane Diedrichsen.